I believe we can move past some of the old debates that so often define the region and move forward in a way that benefits your generation with new thinking. An energetic, impatient, dynamic, and diverse generation that you represent, both in the United States and across the hemisphere. More than 100 million people in Latin America and the Caribbean are between the ages of 15 and 24. Most of the region is under 35. And what gives me so much hope about your generation is that you're more interested in the hard work of waging peace than resorting to the quick impulses of conflict. You're more interested in the hard work of building prosperity through entrepreneurship, not cronyism or corruption. You're more eager for progress that comes not by holding down any segment of society, but by holding up the rights of every human being, regardless of what we look like or how we pray or who we love. You care less about the world as it has been and more about the world as it should be and can be. And unlike any other time in our history, the technology at your disposal means that you don't have to wait for the change that you're looking for. You have the freedom to create it in your own powerful and disruptive ways. Many of you already have, whether by starting your own enterprises. And I want you to have every chance, every tool you need to make this world better. And we'll help you to expand your commercial and social ventures. We'll embed you in an American business and incubators. We'll give U.S. participants the chance to continue their collaboration with you. So the idea is, is that you'll get a chance to implement your ideas, but now have linkages that give you access to capital and, and, and research and all the things you need to mobilize and implement the kinds of things that you're doing. And this isn't charity for us. This is an investment in your future because that means it's an investment in our future. A future where climate researchers in the Amazon can collaborate with scientists in Alaska. An idea in Barbados suddenly can be developed in an incubator in, in Boston. Anti-gang activities in Honduras can be connected to similar activities in Houston, Texas. It's a future where any kid from Kingston can choose a path that opens his or her horizons beyond their neighborhood to the wider world. And that impulse, that impulse to make the world better, to push back on those who try to make it worse, that's something that your generation has to hold on to. And, and you have to remember, it's never easy. There are no days off. But if there's one thing that I know from my own life, it's that with hard work and with hope, change is always within our reach. You know, the Jamaican-American poet Claude McKay, who was a central figure of the Harlem Renaissance, once wrote something along those lines. We must strive on to gain the height, although it may not be in sight, as long as we've got young strivers like you. And I hope to see you in Washington as part of this Young Leaders of the Americas initiative. I'm confident that brighter future will always be in sight. After the President's talk and response to questions from the youth, we asked a few young persons what stood out most for them. I particularly like the way he handled the question of China being a powerful force along the global e economy. That the real issue is that China is creating opportunities for people to get jobs, to have a better quality of life. And if China can provide services in a competitive manner, meeting the needs of people, then that's all together good. One of the things that stood out to me was when he spoke about um, the decriminalization of marijuana I thought that his answers were realistic, the consequences both positive and negative, and I appreciate that he told us that states such as Washington and Colorado are experimenting in a sense, the decriminalization, and we can look to them to see whether or not it's really a viable solution to help an, an ailing economy. His message was very short, yet very, very impactful. Um, I think he's a very down-to-earth person. This is, a, this is history for all of us here today, even for yourself. Well, the session that stood for me really was in terms of how Mr. Obama responded to the immigrant question. 
I think he did a very good job at answering the question and it also speaks to future relations as it relates to how it impacts Jamaica because we know we have a lot of Jamaicans existing in the United States as immigrants and so this was very encouraging in how he responded to that question.